has asked themselves this question, it's how did I get here? How did I get here? I mean, I think everybody has sometime or another, and that's what we're going to be talking about this morning, and I know we're in the Old Testament, I know we're talking about some kings and the nation of Israel and some things that went on with it, but really and truly, when you see what went on this morning that Isaiah was speaking about in chapter 7, and that God seemed fit to record for us to look back and to see, you can see that it was just a culmination of a lot of things that had went on for a lot of years and a lot of little decisions that had turned into big things over the years. And so then it's just like one day you wake up and you look around at what's going on and you just wonder, how did I get here? How did I get here? How did I get to this place? How did I get in this situation? How did I get to, to this place with how I'm living, what I'm thinking, what I'm doing? And so, start, uh, you know, stand this morning, honor reverence for reading God's Word. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 7, and we'll read verses 1 through 9. It says, And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, and Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood, are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Sherejah, thy son, at the end of the conduit, and upper pool, and the highway of the fuller's field. And say unto him, Take heed, and be quiet, and fear not, neither be faint-hearted. For the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria, and the son of Remelia, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remelia, have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it. Let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabil. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And both three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it not be a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remelia's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray through the reading of your word and the preaching of your word this morning, Lord, that our lives be changed, our hearts be changed, and God, most of all, you be glorified in everything that is said and done here this morning. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you, God, for your grace and mercy and your presence here in this place and your presence in our lives and the promises you've given us from your word, God, that will stand forever, that we can depend on, God, that we can look to in times of turmoil, Lord God, and, and we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I'll kind of explain a little bit of the background situation here. I've been preaching through the book of Isaiah, and we've come here to chapter 7. And it's speaking about Ahaz, and Ahaz was the king of Judah, which was the southern kingdom. Israel had been split years earlier after Solomon's reign. Um, it had been split into a northern kingdom and to a southern kingdom. And so here, um, Ahaz is the king of Judah, the southern kingdom. And what was happening was the king of the northern kingdom and um, the Syrian king were going to get together, and they were going to attacked and they had already attacked and there had already been a battle and um, you know like uh, say a hundred thousand people had been killed and another hundred thousand maybe had been captured it would have been a, a bloody battle like they hadn't seen in Israel for years and so but they hadn't taken the city of Jerusalem and so here you have Ahaz this king um, over the southern kingdom where um, Jerusalem's at and he is worried and he is scared about them taking the city and he should be he really should be I mean it's a real threat because they're coming and the overall threat that is not really seen um, in these verses that you can tell without studying it out is the Assyrian Empire is coming. And they're going to destroy and just take over everything. I mean, they're going to be the world empire. And so all these people were worried about them coming. And so these two had made a confederation. They were trying to take the southern kingdom of Israel so that they could use that and use those people to fight against this Assyrian Empire that was coming. Um, Ahaz, this king here, had made a secret alliance with the Assyrian king, and it wasn't really an alliance. He was going to pay him a lot of money and be enslaved to him eventually is what was going to happen in the near future. And so here you have this all set up. But at this time, Ahaz, this king of the southern kingdom of Judah, he's sitting there and he's scared to death, and you can see it says it in a way like, you know, the wind blowing in the trees and the trees shaking. Every little thing, they were scared to death. Every little thing that went on, they were jumpy. And, you know, just waiting to see the next thing that happened, the next thing that falls. And so you have him and this, this whole nation, this southern kingdom down there, and they're scared to death. And they're just like waiting on the axe to fall. And so here he is, he's going out, and he's trying to look at the water system and see how they could, you know, they could take and kind of defend it, see how they could take It's just like, you know, you look in them old westerns. I mean, I grew up watching those old westerns with my dad. When they knew somebody was coming, 
they had bored up the windows. You know what I mean. They were boarding up the windows. They were getting ready for a fight. I mean, and, and so here's what was going on. That's kind of the situation. And here you have Isaiah walking up, this prophet, this man of God, who is speaking to these people and trying to explain to them what God is going to bring, the judgment that's going to come if they don't repent and they don't turn. And so he's coming and he takes his boy with him. And his boy's name is said right there, and it, you know, it means a remnant shall return. And so God had told him to take his son because his son's very name was an encouragement to these people that God was going to take care of them, that God was going to be with them, and that one day they would be back there. They would be ruling again. And so that God was on the throne, and he wanted them to understand that. He told him not to fear, not to be afraid. And so he was trying to encourage these people. But I just look at this, and I think back, knowing the biblical history behind this, that they just got to think, how did I get here? How did Israel get to a place, God's chosen people, to where it was split up to start with? How did they get to a place where now the northern kingdom is over there siding with some ungodly people in a fight and, and you know, doing the things that God wouldn't have them to do there? How is it that Ahaz in the southern kingdom was worried to death that, that we're going to be overtaken? You know, the temple was going to be destroyed. All these things were going to happen they, in their mind and in their hearts. He was going to be taken off the throne and replaced. How did they get there? You know, and you've got to be thinking about that question. How did they get there? But it started with some decisions they made in the past. It started with some selfish decisions after Solomon was gone where some men wanted to take over on their own and it split a kingdom. It started with some selfish decisions of a man who brought two calves into the northern kingdom and had them worshiping someone besides God Almighty. It started with a decision when they decided in the southern kingdom to bring in and worship Baal. It decided when they turned away from depending on God. It was decided in it was those decisions that led to this place. And when you look at the northern kingdom and you look at Syria lining up together, I can tell you what they were doing. They were scheming against God and against God's people. They were scheming against God. And I, I, I know there's some people in their lives, they just woke up one day and, and they wonder, now how did I end up scheming against God? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm telling you right now, that if you're trying to serve God, if you're trying to be a man or woman of faith, and you're trying to walk your Christian life out there in the world, there's going to be people that come against you, and it may not be in an aggressive and loud way. It may not be to where everybody knows they're coming after you, but there are going to be some people that come against you because of who you are and what you stand for, and they're going to be scheming not just against you and trying to take you down, but overall, look at the bottom line, they are scheming against God Almighty. They're scheming against God Almighty. And, and it looks bad, it looks terrible many times for God's people. When we get in those situations, it feels like that we can't win. It feels like, where is God at? It feels like, how is this going to happen? I hear you, God, but how is this going to happen? And you think about it. Well, what God is telling Ahaz, I'm telling you right now. He's telling him, don't worry, don't fret. Have faith, trust in me, and I'll take care of it. And that's the decision that we've got to make as God's people is are we going to listen to God? Are we going to stand with God? Are we going to believe and trust in Jesus Christ and His power and His strength and His provisions? Or are we going to take our own hands to the plow and try to take care of it ourselves? You get what I'm saying? You've got that decision to make every day you wake up in the morning. You've got that decision to make. Am I going to live this day in the power of Christ? Or am I going to live this day in my own strength? I'm going to tell you right now, when you walk with God, you have power like people can't believe. When you walk with God, you get to see things that are unreal and awesome that you just can't explain. And nobody else can either. When you walk with God, He makes a way. When you walk with God, He protects you. Listen to these verses right here. This is what happens to people that scheme against God. It's so silly. It's so silly to think that you could scheme and outwit somebody who created the universe, who holds the earth in his hands, who puts the moon in the right place at the right time every day and moment of the year. He, I mean, he worked all that out in an instant. When he spoke it, it came. And to think in our human minds that we can outsmart and outwit God, but people do that sometimes. Listen to what, listen to this, Psalms 133. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Deuteronomy 28, 7, The Lord shall cause mine enemies 
that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. I just like that verse. I just like that verse. They, they come in all organized and ready to roll, and God just sees them running everywhere. I just like that verse. I'm going to tell you something. If these verses don't stir your heart, then maybe you've never gotten out there and shared your faith. Maybe you've never gotten out there and lived it and tried to breathe it and tried to do it in a way that the devil gets mad and all of hell tries to come against you. Because when you do that, you appreciate these verses, man. You appreciate what God is saying here in His Word. It says, Happy, O thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. The shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? Thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. The gods, the things that they are holding most dear, and putting their strength and power, all their faith in, to have the strength and power to do what they want to do, God's going to tear it down. There's nothing going to take away from the glory of God ultimately. Don't you understand, even when a man or woman goes to hell, it brings glory to God in a sense that it shows that He is on the throne and He is in control. And no man, woman, or child is going to get anywhere or get anything done eternally apart from His Son, Jesus Christ. Don't you get it's all going to bring Him glory? I'm telling you this morning, deliver me, O Lord, is what the psalmist said, from my enemies. I will flee unto thee to hide me. That's what God was telling Ahaz. Come to me. Come be hidden in me. But you wonder how did these people get to the place they were scheming against God? Well, they had the right past. They'd been brought up, their ancestors had been brought up out of Egypt. It's like all the other Israelites. They'd been taught the Word of God. But they decided that they could do it on their own. They decided that they could choose the things in life and do a better job of living on themselves. They decided to do it their way. Don't that just sound so simple? Doesn't that sound like something that we do? Doesn't that sound like something that we've all been guilty of sometime or another? Leaving God out of the picture? Doing it on our own? Well, that's how they ended up being enemies of God. That's how they ended up scheming against God. But there are also some other people in this situation. Also Ahaz and that bunch in the southern kingdom. Not only sometimes can you wake up and say, how did I get here scheming against God? But there's some days you can wake up and you can say, in some situations where you can say, how did I get here scheming for God? So what do you mean by that, Brother Greg? Well, listen, listen, listen. There's a lot of people trying to do God's work their own way, in their own strength, in their own flesh, in their own power. So no, they're not scheming against God so to speak, but they're scheming for God. They try to think that there's some other way that they need to help God out. There's something better. There's a better way to get to where God wants you to be. And there's just not. There's just not. There's only one way. There's only one way. And that's through Him. Through His strength, through His power. Through His plan. See, you can wake up and you can look around and you can be scheming for God. You may tell you why a lot of times people start scheming for God and start trying to figure out how to do God's work their own way? It's because they got so busy in the work and the ministry in the modern day church they've lost the power of God on their life because they hadn't spent their personal time and their quality time with God. It's because they got so busy in their own life and in these things that that used to didn't be there and take first priority in their lives have taken the place of God and God isn't first place anymore. And so you are still trying to serve God in some kind of capacity, but yet you don't have the power of God on you because you're not spending time with God like you should. You can even get there in ministry work. Get so busy trying to do the things for God that you don't spend time with God. And what it all amounts to and what God's trying to tell Ahaz and what he's trying to remind him of, these guys right here that you're so worried about, all these little things that are worrying you to death, that every time the wind blows, you jump. Now, there's some people just naturally jump you, amen? There's some of you in here now, they, they people pull some bad tricks on you. They know you're jumping. They'll catch you in the dark or they'll catch you somewhere. 
I know of somebody one time that climbed in the back of somebody's seat of their car that left unlocked and laid down where they couldn't see them and they got going down the road and they grabbed their arm and hollered at them. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Now anybody's going to jump when that happens. <laughs> it wasn't Terry Murray. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, though. But listen, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things you shouldn't be afraid of. See what he called these people right here? Look in these verses what he said. He called them smoking firebrands. You say, well, what in the world does that mean, smoking firebrands? Let me tell you what it means. You know, any, any of you ever went here, went camping, and, and you wake up the next morning, and you've had a fire built, and it's still smoking, but the wood's burnt out? It ain't no good for fuel anymore. It can't help you. It's not putting off any heat. It's not got any power. It's not got any strength left, but it's still smoking. That's what God was saying about these two kings. He was saying, there's some smoke still there, but the fire's gone. In two years, both of these men that he was so worried about are going to be dead. In two years, in 56 years, I think it is. I could be mistaken, but somewhere around 56 years, that northern kingdom was going to be attacked by the Assyrian Empire, and they're going to be overtaken. Their strength and power is going to be gone. He's ain't going to be called a nation anymore. So all the things that he was so worried about had no strength and power. We're on the way out. But because of his lack of faith, all these little things that he shouldn't have been worried about were scaring him to death. You ever been there? You ever been there? Come on now. Yeah, I'm telling you. All these little things in life. When you, tell you something, when you do what God wants you to do, he takes care of those things. And it brings you a peace that you can't explain. That you can't get anywhere else. He ain't going to let a country have, have its faith in its military, in its, in its great minds, in its leaders. He ain't going to let a people have their, have their faith in their money, in their methods, he wants you, no matter, I'm telling you, who you are, to have your faith in Him. And He be the one you turn to for strength when you need it. And He be the one that brings you the assurance that it's all going to be okay. That's what God wants. That's what He's wanting to do for Ahaz. Listen to these verses right here. Listen to this now. When you wake up and you're looking around and you say, how did I get here? Scheming for God. Listen to these verses. They'll remind you of some... some some things. 1 Corinthians 2 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Job said, With the ancient is wisdom, and the length of days is understanding. With him, him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. Psalms 147 1 says, Praise ye the Lord for his good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and a praise is comely. 147 2 says, The Lord doth build up Jerusalem, he gathered together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart. He bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of stars. He calleth them by their name. Great is our Lord and great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Jeremiah said in chapter 10, He had made the earth by His power. He has established the world by His wisdom. He has stretched out the heavens by His discretions. When He uttered His voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and He causes the vapor to ascend. From the end of the earth, he maketh lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in him. There is no breath, there is no strength, there is no life. in anything you put your confidence in, that is not God Almighty. That is not the Lord Jesus Christ. They are vanity, is what Jeremiah said. And the work of errors. If you're doing that today, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're going about it the wrong way. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. You say, what are you doing when you, what do you do when you're going the wrong way? You turn around. You repent. No, you might not be doing something immoral. It may be a decision about work. Where you work, it may be a decision about money. But you're not listening to God. Think about where you're at right now in life. Think about that question, how did I get here? 
Did you get to the place you're at? Did you make the decisions you made because you were listening to God? Because you were trusting the wisdom in His Word? Or did you just get here because these are the things you decided to do? That will answer the question of whether you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. And if you're doing it wrong, all you need to do is turn around. All you need to do is repent. Say, God, I'm so sorry for leaving you out of this part of my life. See, it may not have hit yet, but it will. Like I said, two years till those guys died. Fifty-six years till that northern kingdom was taken out. But it was coming. If you live a life apart from God, it's coming. And see, you can be sitting in the church house. You can be sitting in the church house every Sunday and not including God in your everyday decisions and making Him first and foremost in your life. People do it all the time. All the time. I'm sad to say that there was a point and a place in my life before I was saved. It's been a long time ago now. When I'd wake up in the morning and be hung over, and look around and not know where I was at. There have been places in my life before I got saved that I looked at something I'd done and I'd say, how did I get here? There's been places and points in my life since I've been saved that I look around at decisions I made and listen to me now, how they hurt other people. This man was looking at 100,000 people dead because of the decisions they had made. And I say, how did I get here? See, you may be sitting out there today. You may be sitting out at this moment right now in your life. You may be looking around. And you may be thinking, how did I get here? When you got up and you looked in the mirror this morning, you didn't see what everybody else seen. You saw what you felt like something that was ugly. And that was dirty. And that was guilty. Well, let me tell you something about what Isaiah told Ahaz. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. He tried to be so religious, but he just didn't want to hear what God had to say. He didn't want to hear what God had to say. He didn't listen. Listen, there's going to be some people in here this morning. I don't care how good the singing was. I don't care how good the preaching was. I don't care, you know, how perfect the Word of God is. I don't care how the Holy Spirit convicts them. They ain't going to listen. But there's going to be some people in here this morning that listen. God's speaking to you right now and you listen. He said, hear ye now, house of David. He said, you know what, if Ahaz won't listen, I'm giving this to all my people. I'm giving this to the whole house of Israel. I'm giving this to the whole southern kingdom of Judah. It is a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? This is what it says in verse 14. Therefore, these are some of the greatest words in the Old Testament. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He was prophesying about Jesus coming. That's one of the things he was doing there in that verse. You know what Emmanuel means? It means God is with us. God is with us. You see, you may be like Ahaz, man. You may be in the middle of something going down that you just can't handle and you don't know how you're going to get out. Oh, God is with us, man. God is with us. And see, they were looking forward to a Savior to come. You know what we can do? We can look back at a Savior who came. We can look right now to a Savior who's here. And God is with us. When you become a Christian, I'm telling you right now, God implants the Holy Spirit of God inside of each believer. When you're born again, God Himself comes to live and dwell inside of you. God is with us. When you sin, when you come short of the glory of God, and you can't pay the price for your sins, you look back on the cross of Calvary, your debt has been paid. Your way has been made. God is with us. And He'll be with us for all eternity. So the question is this morning, are you going to be like Ahaz? 
and look around and wonder how you got there, but then not listen to God? Are you going to be one of those remnant, one of those people? Maybe not the, the majority, maybe the minority, but that's going to listen to God and include Him in your everyday decision and include Him in everything you do. Most of all, in your eternity, if you've never been saved. That's the place it first starts today, is committing your life to Him. What these people needed to do instead of looking at that water is they needed to have a prayer meeting. They needed to have some time with God and they needed to repent. And they needed to tear down those things that were taking God's place in their life. So you know today, if you've been living a life apart from God and His wisdom, what you need to do is have a prayer meeting. It can start be right down here at this altar. Be right there where you're at. God can hear you anywhere you're at. You need to talk to God today. You need to repent of your sins. You need to turn to Him. And you need to tear down those things you put in His place in your life. That's what you need to do. That's what will defend you. That's what will make you whole. That's what will help you. That's what will bring you hope, blessed assurance every day of your life is Him. So do that today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Do it today. We're going to have a song of invitation. You listen to these